Good afternoon. It's great to see everybody. I just wanted to say how exciting a day it is for the Houston Rockets, for our organization, for Clutch City Sports and Entertainment. Um, it's also a little bittersweet uh, from a sense that uh, in a certain respect, we're saying goodbye to the greatest owner that this city has ever known. Uh, Leslie Alexander is a Hall of Fame owner, someone who's brought us two championships, four WNBA championships, Hall of Fame players and coaches, and done so much for the city through his charitable efforts. When, when he became the owner back in 93, he talked about wanting to win championships and becoming the most charitable owner in the NBA. And for the city of Houston, for all of us here, that's exactly what he did. So uh, we can never thank him enough. And I know that Tillman and Leslie have known each other for years, and Leslie couldn't be more happy or proud uh, of this day and, and uh, having the, the team transition to Tillman. Um, many have asked about the process, so I'm just going to mention a couple things real quick uh, before Tillman uh, makes his remarks and then we answer questions. But during the sales process, Len uh, Leslie called in July, uh, middle of July, and he said uh, he wanted to make a change in his life and he was going to put the team up for sale. And anybody who knows Leslie knows that once he makes a decision, it's ready to move forward and then we have to figure out how to, how to get it done. And the objectives he laid out were he wanted to be someone who was a Houston native or someone who is passionate and committed to the city of Houston and all that it represents. Uh, also someone who is going to embrace the culture and embrace the, the team and the resources and, and the, the people here to help us get to the next level through their passion and creativity. Um, someone who is going to be able to close quickly. Didn't want this to be a, uh, a sales process that could possibly get in the way of what could be a really special season. Um, and we didn't want this to become a distraction to the team. And then finally, he just wanted a fair price from someone who was prepared uh, to close uh, either individually or with their partners. And I think all of those objectives were clearly met, and everybody who knows Tillman knows how passionate he is, how committed he is, uh, how excited he is uh, to become the next owner of the Houston Rockets. So on behalf of our organization, on behalf of Leslie, congratulations, Tillman, and welcome. Thanks, I will say it is an interesting process when I think about that 24, 25 years ago, uh, myself and John Moores uh, made an attempt to, uh, to buy the Houston Rockets, and, uh, and we lost, and that's when I realized there is no justice in the courthouse, so. <laughs> but we got out lawyered, but I'd never let that happen again. But uh, what's funny is that was going on even the night before. I, I truly did not like the way that Les was being treated. In, in, in the city of Houston and the way the media was treating him, that a guy from New York was coming in. And, and I even had him over to my house uh, the night before the, uh, the injunction hearing, and we had pizza together and, and uh, kind of welcomed him to Houston in case he won, which he did, because uh, it was just business. And uh, it, it's been a pleasure knowing Les for the last 24 years. I've had him uh, at my ranch for Thanksgiving dinner before. I've had him at my St. Louis salute many times and, of course, at my house. Uh, but when it came time to sell the team, I didn't get any favors, I can tell you all that. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We went back to business again. Um, but I, I will tell you this. Uh, I kind of went through my life, and I've had a wonderful life and a wonderful family, and, and lots of good things have happened to me. And I, and, and I got to a point where I said, gosh, if I laid my head down on the pillow for the last time, the one thing that I ever got to accomplish was owning a team in my hometown. And I've looked at other teams in the last few years, but it's just not the same. Uh, you just can't own a team uh, not in your hometown as far as I'm concerned. I started listening to the San Diego Rockets when I was in junior high school when they said they were moving to Houston, Texas with uh, Elvin Hayes. And, and uh, that's when I became a Houston Rocket fan when they were in San Diego. So I've been on the ride from the beginning. Uh, uh, Les kept me involved in the team. I had the two championship rings from 93, 94, but this is a different feeling. Let me just tell you guys. And uh, I, I feel very special that uh, this opportunity came upon me. Uh, I, I will tell you, uh, it was not an easy process. It was extremely stressful. We were negotiating over the storm. Uh, when I was in California shooting my show, it, it was not easy. And uh, I will tell you, and I think Tad will tell you, we just kind of came in and we did it the Landry's way and, and, and said, we'll do this 
quicker and higher than anybody else. And, uh, and that's what happened. And uh, these guys were great to work with the last few weeks, bringing it all together. You know, I look at different people in the, in the audience that I've just got to recognize, Steve Shanthal and Rick Lehm from, uh, from my team that worked so hard with Rafael and Tad. Uh, Steve Traver, I appreciate uh, you sticking yourself in there and, and doing whatever you could. Uh, it, it was a hard, long process, but you know what? Well, we got to the finish line, and, and I just can't tell you how, how great it is. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, had just a great warm welcome from the from the Rockets today. It's been fun being out here for a few days. I see some of my really good friends out here. A real Rocket guy, uh, Scott Kelly and uh, his fiance Amico. Uh, you know, thank y'all for being here. Gosh, my good friend Dave Ward and his wife Laura Ward. Dave's such an icon in this city. Uh, you know, just numerous friends out here. If I go any further than that, I'm going to piss <laughs> some people off. So uh, uh, it, 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 it's great to have my four kids here. Dancy, I appreciate your help on this. My four kids here, Michael, Patrick, uh, Blaine, and Blake, and my wife, Paige, my brother, Todd. Uh, I'm very fortunate uh, that my parents uh, are still here to see something like this. Y'all stand up, mother and father. Turn around. Don't wave at me. Wave at them. <laughs> and, and my four kids, y'all, y'all, please stand up. And my wife, Paige. And uh, I, I said this, you know, earlier. And uh, I, I, I will tell you this. Uh, this is a generational asset we look at. And, and if you know us, we're not big sellers of assets. We're more acquirers. And I would be extremely disappointed, and I think they would too. Uh, if any of y'all are still covering this team in 50 years uh, when I'm not around, I think you'll still be carrying it with the Fertitta family. Uh, I think it's going to be here for a long, long time. because. Of Uh, Daryl's here. Daryl, you probably should be up here and not me. They probably want to hear from you more than uh, me. But, uh, Daryl, we have one of the, I think, the best general manager in the NBA, and it's just great to have this management team. I, I know that uh, you guys will ask me this, but, uh, you know, I do think that we have one of the top management teams in the NBA and, and Tad and Daryl and Rafael and, and just the whole staff underneath them. So uh, that's it. That's an opening statement, and I'll be glad to answer questions. So whoever wants to start. Um, it's only fitting you start. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, of the many business deals that you've done, acquisitions you've completed, now that this is official, official, where does this stack up? I don't want to take away anything from the from the the great things that I've been able to build for the Houston area, the downtown aquarium, the Kima Boardwalk, the Pleasure Pier, uh, gosh, the Golden Nugget, Lake Charles in this area, and gosh, you know, the 70 or 80 restaurants. But honestly, nothing even compares. <laughs> nothing compares whatsoever. This is the uh, the ultimate. Uh, it's the ultimate. You're in a club of 30. And uh, anybody can go build a boardwalk, anybody can go build an aquarium, anybody can build tall buildings, but uh, not everybody gets to own an NBA franchise. And gosh, to be lucky to have to pay $2.2 billion, how lucky could I be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, gentlemen over here, lucky. Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2, congratulations. Uh, talk about style. A lot of people want to know what style you might bring as an owner. Some owners stay in the back, background, some are heavily involved. This is your first venture in a team ownership, being the main guy. What's your style going to be? You know, I think that, uh, you know, from what I did this morning before this press conference, uh, I didn't think the players' cafeteria was very nice, and we're going to fix it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the style of owner I'm going to be. Uh, I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. And, and – uh, on, on the business side, well, I'll be a huge support to uh, Tad, not that he needs it, but uh, I'm into details. I'm not into micromanaging. Uh, I couldn't micromanage. That's how I've built a business as big as I have, but I am into details. But I can tell you this, I've learned more about, I thought I knew a lot about basketball. I've learned more about basketball 
in the last 30 days than I learned in the last 30 years hanging around with with Daryl and the basketball people and even Tad. So not that even Tad, but but but, <laughs> but no, I mean just it's it's just uh, it's it's a it's a different technology and a different science than than what the fan sees and. Uh, and as I said, I know what I know and I don't know. Uh, I just don't want surprises. You know, has Daryl been kind enough to tell me, hey, we're getting ready to let this guy go. He's our 15th player. And are there tough decisions to make? Absolutely. And does the buck stop with me when things are good and they're bad? Yes. But I, I, I rely heavily, heavily, heavily on the people that get up and do this every day. You will not see me. There's a great owner's office up there. That is not where I will be hanging out, okay? I will be hanging out over there on that beautiful new building, 1510 <laughs> Post Oak, okay? Because I have this other big $4 billion company to run. And, uh, and I would go where I can help the most, okay? I can't help them over here, okay? Will I be here on draft day and trade day and hopefully every game and a few other days? Absolutely, because somebody is going to look at me and say, do you want to pay the excise, ta excise tax of uh, $15 million if we do this? So, yes, I am going to make that decision, <laughs> but I am going to totally rely on the people that get up and do this every day. I, I, I can't describe what kind of owner I'm going to be. Uh, somebody said, are you going to be more like Peter in San Antonio or more like Mark Cuban? I have no idea. I'm Tillman Fertitta, and I don't think I'll be anything like Mark Cuban, who has an excellent style to be as successful as, as he's been. And I think Peter has an unbelievable style that fits him to run San Antonio. I, I, the people that know me, I'm just going to be Tillman. Hi, Tillman in the back. Um, Kim Davis from Chalk Talk. Can you talk about what excites you most about this team, other than the fact that it is in your hometown? What did you like? What do you like so much about this Rockets organization and team? Well, it, it's you know I've known Tad since he started here. You know I've sat there next to uh, to Les on the front row since you know this Toyota Center's open. So it's what I like about. Uh, most about it is I like owning it because <laughs> I like owning things. So, uh, you know, I'm just excited. But think about the, the, the what I walked into. You know, if somebody would have said, would you have rather paid, you know, $1.2 billion and not had James Cr – James, <laughs> I have a James Kramer um, – a James Harden and a Chris Paul – Yes, I would have gone for the $1.2 billion. I have to say, no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, you know, to walk into this situation, you know, with James Harden and, and Chris Paul is unbelievable. you got to remember, the name of the game is to get to the playoffs. And this is a superstar league. And you are not going to get to the playoffs every year and most likely make it to the second round if you don't have a James Harden playing with you. And you add a guy like Chris Paul, and you should get to the Western Conference Finals. And that's the way the league's going, is two or three stars per team. And you know what? If we don't get where we need to be this year with two superstars, then Daryl and myself and Tad and the rest of his unbelievable basketball people. And, and, and I can tell you this, Daryl's got a, a group in basketball operations that uh, are truly unbelievable from Keith Jones all the way down to all of his analysts and everybody. So we're going to make good decisions, and we're going to do whatever it takes to win. I can promise you that. Tillman, Laney Fritz with KPRC. With basketball being such a global sport and the Rockets being so global, is that something that excites you about owning this organization? Is something you plan to continue to extend? You know, definitely. Um, we, we really don't know where football is going. Even people that I know in football – uh, are concerned that where is it going to be in 50 or 60 years. There's nothing like the NFL. We all agree. We wait for football season. But there are people that truly don't know where it's going to be in 50 years. And then you have baseball that uh, the, the average viewing age is, is 60 years old. And, and, and then you have the NBA that, you know, has become this true world sport besides soccer. And, and – uh, out of the three major ones and, you know, leaving out hockey, um, I think this is by far the best one to have today. And, and <laughs> I'll tell you this, I would have been scared to pay $2.2 billion for an NFL franchise today. And I know the NFL owners don't like hearing that, but uh, the NBA is where it's at. You mentioned 
do whatever it takes. Have you looked already at the numbers if you were to keep this team going forward, luxury taxes, the, the way it's set up now, and what is your position on doing that? Uh, I, I have looked at the numbers, not because I wanted to look at the numbers, but uh, Daryl stuck them in front of my face, so I had to look at them. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, this is a real business with some really, really tough decisions. And uh, I had no idea, you know, what tough decisions there is to make every single year. And uh, I'm going to take recommendations from, from uh, Daryl and Tad. Uh, these guys know exactly what they're doing. I want to welcome our chief of police, my good friend. Artist. Artist. We're very, you know, we talk about, you know, being lucky in this town. and. You know, I personally think I'm lucky. I think we're all lucky to have a Houston owner. But I can tell you, to, to pick up Art as our police chief from Austin, Texas, and the California Highway Patrol 10 years before that, you just don't know how lucky we are to have him. So. Tillman, Barry Warner, 94.1 Sports Map. Gosh, how God, are we that old, Barry? How far we, are we? We are. <laughs> uh, Tillman, how do you spread yourself so you know, you're already spread thin in a sense with all your responsibilities, but with the amount of time you spend as the chairman of the Board of Regents at U of H and now adding this, how does Tillman Fertitta sit back and adjust? And number two, Les was very much against bringing in an NHL team just to lease it to him. Are you open-minded of that prospect if there is a team on the ropes that would want to move to the fourth largest city in the country? You know, number one, I, I'm multitasked better than anybody and uh, you know it's easy for me to be chairman of the Board of Regents the University of Houston because like I said I just need a good vice chair who likes you know using shovels to dig new buildings and cutting ribbons I don't I'm not there for the pageantry I'm there for the heavy lifting at University of Houston and that's what I do uh, basically the Houston Rockets also I, I'm here for the heavy lifting and the in the hard decisions that we can all get in a room and I think that Daryl and, and Tad and Rafael have already seen and, and just little things that uh, come up that I, I look around the room and say, where are you? And uh, um, so that, that's, I like a consensus and this is the way I operate. Either I'm going to convince you this is a better decision or you're going to convince me. But we're all going to walk out of this room and we're going to agree. And so if you ever see a tough decision made with this franchise, uh, you're not going to see that Daryl and me and Tad and Rafael and the rest of his operations people and my executive Steve and Rick and and my three sons. You, you're going to you're going to see us agreeing. We're going to agree to agree or agree to. We'll never agree to disagree. We're going to convince the other one this is the way it's going to be and this is the way it's it's better to be. Uh, if everybody wants to go one way and I want to go the other, we're going to go the other way. Okay, I get three or four people going against me, and I can't convince them. Then I know one thing: I'm wrong. So that's just the way it is. I think if I could just address the NHL issue because this has come up a few different times. Um, you know, we've looked at many NHL teams over the years, and it wasn't a matter of not wanting to bring in somebody as whether they be a tenant or or not. It just the the deals didn't work, and so Leslie was always looking forward to opportunities that could make the city better, the sports scene in the city better, and, and Toyota Center more effective and, and, and fill more dates. But uh, the NHL at the time, the teams that uh, he looked at and that we looked at, the numbers didn't work, the CBA didn't work, and it just didn't work for the structure that we had in place. So I, Tillman and I have already talked about a number of different things. There's optionality in going forward with things that he wants to look at. And we're going to look at everything that makes sense for this building, for his companies, for the city of Houston, and how we can possibly build that. But like anything, if the numbers don't work and the deal doesn't work, then I'm not going to recommend it to him. Remember, I think one of the reasons that I was able to, to buy this team was the team was going to do between 40 and, say, 60, 70 million dollars in EBITDA. And other buyers come in and, and they get caught up in the EBITDA number. Well, I knew that this team wasn't selling on EBITDA, okay? There's never been a sports team sell for less from the time it was bought. And so while everybody else was trying to figure out the numbers, I went and figured out the money side of it, okay? And I think that's why this is, was the quickest close ever and the highest price in the history of the NBA. 
So history of professional sports in North America. Uh, of all just, sports, just technically. Yeah. <laughs> of all NFL, everything so yeah. far, and and b because you 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 got to pay attention to the numbers, and the 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 NHL is the same way. I would put an NHL team here tomorrow, but it's 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 got this one has got to work. Okay, would I love to have the other dates in the building? Do I want to see Toyota Center, you know, filled up 300 nights a year? Definitely. So we'll do whatever we can do, but whatever we do is going to make sense. But yes, will we be aggressive? Yes, that's my nature. I'm Pooja Lodia with KTRK. Our question is, we've all noticed the Landry's logo there in the backdrop there. The question is, are we going to start seeing those restaurants? here at the Toyota Center. How do those businesses and those brands play in with you owning this team now? Uh, they play in a lot, okay? Uh, there's one company that owns everything. Fertitta Entertainment, which I own 100%, uh, is, owns the Houston Rockets, Landry 600 restaurants, the huge hospitality division, and the huge gaming division. And and I don't think they'll let me put a casino in here. <laughs> but but uh, uh, I, I, there is a contract with, with, with the Levy organization uh, for the concessions. We have a very good relationship with them, and they'll let us do basically whatever we want to do. And so, yes, uh, will you start seeing some of our brands and some of our food and and maybe some better food in the media lounge before a game yes okay because um, it's important to me remember this N not that they don't do a wonderful job I just you gotta understand I'm in the hospitality business okay uh, if I'm sitting there with y'all and and you need your coffee cup filled I will go pick up the coffee cup and fill it okay I, I'm in the service business I'm in the hospitality business so I'm going to try to make everything always better for you, my customer, because there's a saying that I preach every day. There are no spare customers, and that goes from the people that are buying tickets here to the media to anybody else. You're all a customer here of the Houston Rockets and the Landry's organization. Uh, Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. T tell me, I only ask you this because it's been such an issue in the NFL and um, in other sports, but do you have a policy where the Rockets have a policy for the national anthem and anything uh, the team, the players might want to do, specifically because Chris Paul and uh, some other players have been associated with that in the past, and Chris is a, the NBPA president? Um, you know, what's interesting is, and, and, and which I think is really good, is the NBA has a policy. And the NBA says everybody's going to stand up for the national anthem, and uh, I think that's I think it's really good. Uh, every that's what we should do, and if you I, I totally believe in free speech, and uh, everybody should do what they want to do on on their time. They can do whatever they want to do, and uh, but the NBA has a policy, so we're going to live by the NBA policy, just like they make me live by all kind of policies. <laughs> <laughs> I have to follow their policies, so I expect the players to. Christy Reekin from the Associated Press. Since you've wanted to own a team, specifically a team in your town for so long, what do you think that feeling will be on the, in the season opener when you're sitting there and you're watching and it is your team? It'll be kind of exciting, won't it? it who in the hell did let, set us up with Golden State when they're getting their rings, though, is our first game. <laughs> so, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, it, it's exciting. I mean, I, I just, I, it, it's, it's a dream come true. And very few people in life get to have every dream come true. And, and I can tell you that Tillman Fertitta, so far, and, and life is funny and you never know when good or bad is going to happen, has been one of the fortunate ones. And, and I get to have my dream come true when we come back here that next Saturday night and, and, and I get to walk on that floor and look at it totally different, even though I've walked on that floor hundreds of times. Um, this is my building and my team, and it's kind of fun. <laughs> hey, Tillman, Jack Woodhouse with the Houston Business Journal over here. Uh, the, the Rockets do have an eSports division headed by Sebastian Park. Uh, what do you plan to do uh, with the eSports realm uh, with the organization? I can tell you we're looking at it very hard and we're trying to do something with it. Uh, you got to understand, 
I already have the most profitable and most well-run um, online gaming enterprise already in the United States, in New Jersey, and it's only legal in New Jersey, and not to mix esports with gaming, but we totally understand it. And, and the Golden Nugget Gaming wins the award every year for, for best internet online gaming. And uh, so, so immediately we're already excited about that, and you know we're excited to see what happens with with sports and uh, and opening up other markets to gaming. Tillman over here, uh, Daniel Gotero, KHOU. You alluded to it during the opening statements. I actually got a shot of your dad getting really emotional um, when all of this is going on. What does this mean to the family? The fact that this will be in your family, and. I think a lot of fans put a lot of stock into the fact that this, that kind of stability, what, what does that really mean to you? There's nothing like a stable franchise in a city, okay? And uh, we're Houstonians, and, and, and I'd like to, we, we were blessed, and I think we served the community in, 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 in a very good way. And, and I've, I've taught my, my kids that when you've been fortunate, you give back. And usually people in my position, you know, aren't going to give the time to be chairman of the Board of Regents and University of Houston for a record fourth time where they had to change the rules so I could keep being chairman. Uh, I like to change rules. I need to change a few NBA rules. Um, um, you know, I, I've been chairman of the Police Foundation for 11 years. Uh, I've been chairman of uh, and founder of Houston's Children's Charity, which, you know, uh, Laura Ward and Dave Ward have been involved in so many years. So um, I love giving back to the community, and I've taught my family that. And they understand how important um, the Rockets are to the community. And, and uh, it's very emotional. It's, uh, you know, it's real simple. I sat down with my family. And I said, we're going to pay $2 billion for the Houston Rockets. Is there anything else y'all would rather buy with $2 billion? Because I've found a way to pull this off, which is a miracle in itself. OK. Um, is there anything else you would rather own anywhere? Think about this big world we live in and this big planet. Do you want a space shuttle to hang out with uh, Scott? You know, what do you want? Do you want to go by the Bellagio? And it wasn't even a close second, the Houston Rockets. Okay, this family loves owning the Houston Rockets. And like I said, uh, as they will be involved in the decision-making process uh, as much as I will. So uh, if something happens you don't like, just go after my kids, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Back here, Lester Gretsch, KSLN Univision 45. Um, given the fact that you uh, were not successful in your first bid for the Rockets back in the day and that you're now sitting here, does it make it any sweeter for you right now? And also, take me back to that moment when you got that phone call, when you were told, it's done. You know, your thoughts at that moment? You know, absolutely. I was, it, it, was, it was a wonderful moment, I mean, because uh, Tad had just kind of told me on Monday that the process is going to go on for a while and I kind of realized that uh, we're, 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 we're struggling here. <laughs> and and uh, I, I happened to be on my boat in Marina del Rey. I was shooting Billion Dollar Buyer out there and I was sick so I was doing that and then at the same time the storm was coming and, and, and Tad said, hey, can you come in tomorrow morning? And, and I had called the day off from shooting my show because I just was so sick. And, and, uh, and I said, and I think you said, well, maybe I, I told you I was more than happy to come in just right. because I in. thought that's what he was going to tell me. So I was hoping. And, and uh, it was just an unbelievable moment. But I, I mean, I can tell you, I was out in L.A. for a few weeks and while we were negotiating the contract just because of schedule with a uh, billion dollar buyer. So Patrick and my, two of my kids go to USC out there. So Patrick was living it with me every day. And I mean, we were waking up at four and five in the morning texting each other because we couldn't sleep over this deal. Okay, it was that bad, okay? Because you want something so bad and you don't want to lose it. And, and, and he, he knows, okay? Yeah. Nobody 
I don't think there was a close second for passion in wanting this team. No, and, and I'll I'll give a, if I can expand on the answer. Uh, there was a time it was the Friday that the storm was hitting, and and we were closing the offices, and Tillman was sick, and and we had it was just before that that Leslie and I had a conversation, and he said um, I'd like you to go ahead and engage in closing discussions with Tillman, and when I called him and we were FaceTiming each other and. Uh, amazed that we could actually both figure it out together <laughs> that uh, that it happened um, Tillman put his head down and he started to cry and that was something that you can see immediately that it was the right call because somebody who cares about it that much and and really needed it and wanted it and has dreamed about it since he was a kid and one of the most successful businessmen in the world um, you know, knowing that, that this was an opportunity that Leslie was giving him and that he had an opportunity to get this done. And, and I can say we've, we, we had over 50 people who had submitted uh, names. We had a dozen who were real uh, potentials. We had about a half a dozen that we got down to that either provided LOIs or we, were, we had an opportunity to close. Tillman took it. Tillman came in because he was most passionate about it. He was most committed to it. He was most committed to this team, this city, most committed to our international reach, most committed to our fans in China, most committed to everything that we've developed organizationally because this is his town and this is his team, and he wanted it more. And he went out and he took it. And, and you know, we, we respect the hustle. That's one thing that you will always know about Leslie and about our organization is that we feel the same way. You respect the hustle for people who go out there and they put their passion on their sleeve and they make it happen. Thanks, Ted. Tillman, you talked a little bit about earlier, you said that you're, you're really into giving back and what you and your family have done. Can you just talk more about what we might see from the Rockets? Mr. Alexander has been really active in terms of um, giving money to the community and that community relationship. Can you talk about that a little bit more? You've you got to remember, though, Leslie's only face was the Houston Rockets. Um, the Houston Rockets and Landry's is the same. So you you might not see the Houston Rockets as much because it's still coming through Landry's and Fertitta Entertainment. We're all one now. Where, where Leslie's only face in Houston was the Houston Rockets, we have a much bigger face. So I, th I think my giving and the events and, and the money speak for itself over the years. Paul Takahashi with the Houston Chronicle. Um, what kind of restaurant brands do you think customers can see here at Toyota? Uh, I know you talked a little bit about that earlier, but are there, and then in terms of the billion dollar buyer, are you looking to have some cross promotional deals with the Rockets? You know, we want to cross promotion anything we can to, to, <laughs> to help offset that $2.2 billion. Um, no, ma matter of fact, I mean, you know, the, the billion dollar buyer is a set deal. Like people say, gosh, what's it like having cameras follow you? You don't, everything is a scene. Okay, but incidents that are happening real time, you always roll into it. And so, yes, just like the flood uh, will be rolled into shows of the billion dollar buyer, the acquisition of the rockets will be rolled into the billion dollar buyer. And, and one of the companies may be using their product here in the Toyota Center. Uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> this is crazy, but the NBA will not allow uh, players to be in a television show. Um, and Rafael, what is the exact rule? I mean, that's it, right? I mean, they can't, they can't, appear, in your show. They can't appear in my show. <laughs> so, so, now, I'm struggling with this one, okay? It's my show, these are my players, and they can't appear in it. So, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I can tell you this, and, and, and I, I don't want to get into it because it's kind of funny, but they gave me some examples. But, but the NBA has a reason for, for everything they do. And when you see the back story, you go, pretty sharp, pretty sharp. So even though that incident or what we would do would, would, would mean what we're doing, there's other things that somebody could do. And, and it keeps a level playing field. Because I could just tell every player, hey, come down here and I'm going to let you star in a movie or I'm going to let you do this because I produce this or do this. It just, it's, it's, it's legal, but it makes sense to me. But I still don't like it. I wanted to have James and Chris in my show. Actually, yeah. <laughs> just to be sure, in case anybody from the NBA is listening, he, he was saying that as a hypothetical. That actually isn't happening, right? No, that is not happening, 100%. 100%.
I'm, 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 uh, the, the NBA will have to get used to my sense of humor. <laughs> but I don't break rules. The rules are the rules, and uh, you, you, will, you will not see me break rules. Tillman uh, in the back, Alex Obario, Sports Radio 610. Uh, I know you touched on the hockey question a second ago. I just wanted to ask, has the NHL approached either of you since this has become official about the possibility of, of coming to Houston? Yes, Larry Tannenbaum is the, the, on the Board of Governors for the NHL with the Toronto franchise, and he and I have sit next to each other at Board of Governors meetings. He's very excited to meet Tillman. Um, he met him briefly during the Finance Committee meeting when Tillman was being approved. Um, and I'm sure that Tillman and I will be up in Toronto at some point to meet with Larry and to talk about the NHL's position, their, their interests, and things that could possibly happen. And Larry and I have had conversations at various times over the years. Um, and again, it gets down to, and he understands this, it gets down to there weren't deals to be done with the teams that were available, and there, there wasn't a situation that made sense here for, this, for uh, you know, the structure here within, within Houston. Um, but everything's open. You know, Tillman is aggressive, and he's someone who's made it very clear to me. He, he wants to see everything, and so we'll be getting him and Larry together soon. But unlike basketball you know we need to make sure that hockey fans live in Houston Texans and 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 Houstonians will come out and support an NHL team um when the arrows left i mean i think they were only 2 or 3000 4000 mm-hmm. people a game people. if if uh if we have an NHL team we need to put 16000 people in that stadium every night 17000 18000 that's what we hold here so um if I go out and get an NHL team, I'm going to ask the citizens of Houston to make sure they're going to commit to help me do it. Because, you know, once again, none of this is successful without the fans out there. And I know that. Tillman, over here, this is a, it's a non-Rockets question, but not a non-Houston question. Uh, we've seen you at Minute Bay Park many, many times. What do you think about what's going on with the Astros? I, I think it's exciting for the city of Houston. I'm, 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 I'm thrilled for them. Uh, I wish Jim Crane, the absolute, and and the whole team over there, and all his partners, uh, all the luck in the world. Uh, I wish they were my team right now.
Thank you.